Hi, my name is Alexis Rossi. I'm a librarian and also the director of collections at the Internet Archive. The Internet Archive is a nonprofit library that was founded to bring all of human knowledge online and make it accessible for free to everyone. The Internet Archive was founded in 1996 and our original mission was to archive the Internet. So the first collection I'm going to show you today is the Wayback Machine. The Wayback contains more than 500 billion archived web pages spanning 24 years of internet history. And it is searchable either from our front page right here, or if you go into the media nav down up here and open the web section, it is searchable right here. For the moment, let's actually go to the front page of the Wayback Machine, and we can do that by clicking on the logo. Now, there's a whole lot of information on this page, but the main thing you're probably going to want to do while you're here is search. There's two ways to search, either by URL or by keyword. Keyword searching is not exactly like it is on Google. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but first, let's say I know what URL I'm looking for. In this case, I'll just look for my own personal web page. The calendar page shows you how many times this website has been captured over the years. Whichever year is highlighted up here, in this case 2020, will be displayed below. Let's actually go back to 2002 so that it's really embarrassing. Let's choose one of those. <laughs> yes, just as embarrassing as I thought. Okay, so you can scroll through time up here. Um, you can also find out what date you're on by looking here. Let's see if I have any photos. So this isn't just an image. This is actually the code of the page that was captured at the time in 2002. So you can see Easter of 2002 is present. Uh, whatever was in March of 2002 right here, we just didn't capture it at the time. Assuming this is something I might want to look at again later, I would recommend using the My Web Archive icon right up here. Now there's a whole lot of stuff going on here. There's ways to find out more, you can share, etc. But for my purposes, I am going to click share via my web archive. And I got a little success here. And I'm going to show you where that ends up uh, later on. It ends up in your account page. For the moment, let's go back to the Wayback Machine front page. Just click the logo. And I mentioned there was a second way to search. Now, keyword searching on Google means that you're searching every word on every page across their entire index. Because the Wayback Machine is so big, um, we've had to narrow that down a little bit. So when you search by keyword here, you're actually searching the page URL, the title, the meta tags, some things like that, but not every word on every page. So if I search for something like kazoos, oops, I have to spell that right first, kazoos. Um, if I search for something like kazoos, I'm going to get websites about kazoos. I'm not going to find the one article on the New York Times that mentioned a kazoo five years ago. That is not going to happen. But if I wanted websites about kazoos, boy, am I in luck. And one more thing about the Wayback Machine that you might find interesting. Let's go back to the front page again. If there's something on the web that is live right now that you want to capture. For example, a lot of people use the web to do research these days. And if you put a website in your citations for a paper, for example, uh, it, it may not continue to be live. So at some point your, your citations may just go poof. Um, what we recommend is if you're citing something or you're using something for research that you put it into the Wayback Machine. You can do that using Save Page Now. Save page now lives right here. And you can just add the URL that you want to save. We'll save the current day version of alexisrossi.com. And you can save it in your web archive. Again, I'll show you where that is in your account later. I'm going to go ahead and click that. So you'll see a dialog down here that uh, is saving the page. And there we go. You get the done message up here. Um, this is where you can find the version of the page that you just saved. And of course, it will be in your web archive later because we chose that checkbox. You can search the Wayback from anywhere on the website. Uh, there's a search box up here in the top right that allows you to search the entire site. If you clicked search archived websites right here and put in alexisrossi.com, 
you would be searching for websites instead of searching for books or anything like that. But speaking of books, we're going to move on. In our media nav up here, we just looked at the web, and now let's talk about books. In the book media nav, as well as video, audio, software, etc., you will find some featured collections, some top collections. Basically, these are things that we think you might be particularly interested in. They do not represent everything that is available for books, but they can be good places to start. So let's just very quickly look at Books to Borrow. These are more modern books that you can check out, just like if you were in a physical library. Um, for example, I might be interested in um, birds, like winter birds. I can go ahead and search. And you notice I searched down here on the left, not up here on the right. This search box in the nav, um, it searches the entire website. If you're in a collection and you see a search box down here, it allows you to search just within that collection. So in this case, I searched for birds and winter, and I've got a whole bunch of books here that actually look really great. Uh, let's see, Backyard Birds of Winter, let's look at that. Books are borrowable for either one hour or 14 days, depending on how many copies we have of the book. Um, if it says one hour, it's only available for one hour. Let's go ahead and borrow this book, which anyone with a free account can do. And I can go ahead and flip through. I can even look at more pages at once, so I can scroll through the book. It's awfully pretty. But let's say I was looking for something very specific. I'm not just looking for backyard birds. If I was doing genealogical research, for example, I might want to look in the books nav to see if there was anything good up there. There does happen to be a genealogy collection. But even if something isn't in a genealogical collection, it might still be of interest to me. So if I was looking for a family member, for example, um, I might want to look for their name. Now, if I just search here, First, I'm only searching in genealogy, not all of the books, but also I would only be searching metadata. Metadata is things like title, creator, date, publisher. It's, it's information about the book. It's not the information in the book. If I want to look at the information inside of a book, I can do that because these are eBooks. I can do that by searching text contents. If I only want to search in genealogy and the text contents, I, I would do that here in this box. If I want to search for my family member across all of the texts in the entire archive, I can also do that. Using the site search box up here, you'll notice there's a pull down. I can search metadata. I can also search the text contents. In this case, I'm going to look for Mary Mathis. And that name appears in 426 books in the archive. You can see the number of results right there. And as we scroll through, you'll see that underneath each of these books, there are clips. Snippets that show where Mary Mathis was mentioned and what the context was. So hopefully that will allow us to find the Mary Mathis that we're actually interested in. For example, uh, this looks like it might be a yearbook. Let's try that. Now we're inside the book. We can flip through. Our result is shown right here. We can skip straight to that page. And it's a little bit hard to see because it's small, but it's actually highlighted right there. So let me zoom in. There's Mary Mathis right there. If I wanted to find other things in this same book and only search within one book, I can do that right here using the search icon. Let's say I know Mary had a friend named Doris. We have a Doris Jenkins. We have a Doris Starling. 
Here's another picture of Doris Starling. If you're having any trouble finding a book that you're looking for, I recommend going to openlibrary.org. You can find Open Library as well in the Book Media Nav linked right here. Open Library has records for millions of books, some of which we have in ebook format and some of which we don't. But if we don't have the ebook, Open Library will give you pointers on where to find it. With that, let's move on. Next, we're going to take a look at movies. In this case, I don't really know where I'm going. I just know I'm looking for something that happens to be a movie. So I'm going to go into all videos. And what I really want to find is some old Lego commercials. So let's go and we're going to search within movies. So we're not going to search up here, which is the entire website. We're going to search just within movies here for Legos. 2,700 things is an awful lot. And uh, I just want to point out here, we do have a lot of ways to help you narrow stuff down and sort things in ways that might be more helpful for you. So if you wanted to sort by dates or creators, you can do that up here. If you wanted to narrow your search, you do that right here. In this case, I know I'm looking for older stuff, so I'm going to try using year as a way of doing that. Um, I don't see old enough dates here, so let me click on more. Great, okay, so these are in chronological order, so I'm going to go back and I'm interested in stuff from the 70s, early, mid 80s, that kind of era. So let's apply those filters. Okay, and now that's a much more reasonable number of things to look at, right? Seven things is not so bad. These first two actually do look like they might be commercials. So let's take a look. Play. <laughs> yes, okay, this is exactly what I was looking for. I can do different things with this. If it's available to download, I can download files right here. I can share it, put it on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, etc. I can also embed the video into external websites. Or if I'm just trying to collect a bunch of things that I might be interested in, I can also favorite it right here. Just like we discussed with the My Web Archive stuff earlier in the Wayback Machine, these things are going to be available in your account. Of course, there are lots of interesting things in the movies collection. Um, one of the things I would like to point out is the television news archive, which you'll find right here. The television news archive contains content going back to 2009. It has more than 2 million shows. It is focused on news. So you're not going to find uh, old reruns of Friends in here or anything like that. When you search this collection, you're actually searching the captioning that comes along, if I can spell Hurricane Irma, um, you're searching the captioning that comes along with the news program. Let's go ahead and do that search. I would like to point out you don't have to go to the front page of the TV News Archive to do this. Uh, in the site search in the upper right corner, uh, you can search metadata, text contents, which we just did, and TV news captions right there, which will get you to this exact kind of page. So we've searched through 2 million programs to find all of the references to Hurricane Irma. And just like with books, you see snippets here that give you the context. We'll click into one. So this looks a little different than the, the movie that we just looked at, the Lego commercial. Um, these are one minute segments on a timeline. So 506, 507, wherever Hurricane Irma is mentioned, it'll be highlighted. Um, you can go into different segments. Roger Johnson, good morning. Good morning. We just have the new advisory on 5 a.m. And it does show, thankfully enough, that Irma continues to weaken. But it... Okay. As with other things on the archive, you can share it. You can use the URL to cite it in a paper, etc. If you're interested in current events, this goes back to 2009, but we also have radio 
that goes back to 2016. Now you'll find that, again, search the whole site, but search radio transcripts. In this case, let's look for something a little bit more fun than a hurricane. Dolly Parton. So we just searched the radio transcripts for millions of radio programs. These transcripts are created through automatic speech recognition. They have snippets down here again to give you the context. Let's choose one of these. And here you see Dolly Parton 55 times. It allows you to scroll through. You can click to play the program. You can search for other things within the in the program. Like let's look for bluegrass. It looks like that's in there four times. Um, a bluegrass musician. She did that song and many other songs, and she did a. And this sort of brings us into talking about other audio items as well. So uh, one of the things that you might be interested in is music. Let's go up to the media nav bar and go into the audio section. There's some great stuff to explore in here. The Live Music Archive has live shows from thousands of bands. Um, the Old Time Radio Collection has a lot of great old episodes of Gunsmoke and The Shadow Nose and, and all of those kinds of things. Uh, I'm particularly interested in music from the early 1900s, so I'm gonna go look at the 78s. 78s are what came before LPs. And I can do a search for an artist, a song title. In my case, I'm gonna search for a genre. Let's try yodeling. Oh, well, that's more yodeling than I expected. <laughs> um, there's, oh, okay, this has to be great, right? The yodel cha-cha has to be great. Okay, that I was right. That is great. Um, I am going to go ahead and favorite that because I definitely want to find that again later. But I'm also going to leave a review. So down here at the end, you'll see reviews from other people and you can add your own. And when you're done, click details page to go back. And there we are. We're back on the record. As always, there are lots of other audio things to explore in here. I love these, these free audio books. They're volunteers reading public domain books. But we should probably move on to yet another media type. Let's check out software. If there's something in particular you're interested in, like arcade games or console games, uh, there are some featured things up here that you might be particularly interested in. I'm gonna go ahead and look at all software. And I'm going to search for something that I know is very popular on here, uh, which is the Oregon Trail. Oh, 75 versions of the Oregon Trail. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sort by views. And what this is going to do is it's going to show me the most popular version of Oregon Trail first. It looks like it's this one. And it has been played 7.6 million times, amazingly. So let's go take a look. When old systems go kaput, um, the software that was written especially for those systems can also be lost. So what we've done is we've worked with volunteers to find a way to emulate old systems in your browser so that we can load the old software into it and the items are still playable. So when I go to play the Oregon Trail here, it is launching an emulator that pretends to be MS-DOS and then it loads the software, and then I can play the game, just like I'm in MS-DOS in the 1990s. And obviously I should be a carpenter, right? There are loads of things in the software collection, everything from games to word processing software. Uh, we have a new Flash archive that's out because Flash is dying at the end of 2020. Lots more stuff to go explore in software. And finally, let's take a quick look at images. 
we do have some biggies like the Metropolitan Museum of Art and the Brooklyn Museum. Uh, my favorite personally is NASA. And again, you can search for anything you'd like in here. You can see images of Jupiter or images of the Earth. So we've ranged far and wide over the website today. Uh, we saved web pages, we borrowed a book, we left a review, we favorited stuff. Um, and all of that activity can be saved in your account. So let's go up to the account drop down right here where you see your name. And you can go straight to your web archive or your favorites, but um, I'm going to go to my library and that has all of them. The first page we see is our uploads. You can upload, you can upload from anywhere on the site just by clicking upload here next to the search. You can also upload straight from here. So if you have old family photos, the video you took of Zoom karaoke last week, whatever you have, you can go ahead and upload that here. Any posts you've made in forums live right here. Here are the items that we've left reviews on, including the Yodel Cha Cha that we just found. This is where any collections I own live, including my favorites. So if we go into my favorites collection, there's the Yodel Cha Cha, there's the Legos that we favorited, along with anything else I've looked at in the past. And as with any collection, I can go ahead and facet, I can search within, I can sort. Let's go back into our account. Here are my loans. Oh, my loan must have expired because it was only a one hour. So let's look at my history of loans. And yeah, here we go. Here's my backyard birds that I just borrowed, just in case I'd like to look at it again. And finally, here are my web archives. Where we spent a lot of time on AlexisRossi.com. And as always, we can get back to the front page or continue to explore. Well, that was a whole lot of information. So if you have questions, you can go to help.archive.org or you can click the help link up in the nav. Hopefully I've given you a good springboard for hopping off into your own research and let us know if we can be of any assistance at info at archive.org.